Wilbur and Orville. Which one's Wilbur? On the left. Do you know why the Ohio boys chose Kitty Hawk? Yeah, because of the constant headwind. Very good. So they did it on December 17th, 1903. So with that constant headwind of, let's say, 25 miles an hour and their flight speed of 35, so if they did crash, that means they're only doing like 10 miles an hour. All oh, that's what they slept up there in the burlap hammocks they made. Sheesh. Funny how they washed their face with a pitcher and bowl with the water. Okay, so they built the first one and they slept in there with their glider because they were still testing it. The one you're looking at on the right. And then they came in on the left one, much bigger because they had a, a bigger airplane. The gas-powered airplane was much bigger. So they built this this hangar right here that we're looking at right now. And now look at They had a workbench where probably, they could work from. Probably had their uh, linkage for their chains and yep. their motors and everything back there that they had to Amazing. work on daily. There's an actual shot back in the day of the gas-powered uh, airplane in that hangar. That's Kills Devil Hill. We'll be visiting there in just a little bit. Okay, so KJ, look at This is where they started all their flights. This is the starting wow. point. It's pretty cool. So all of them started from here. Yep. And then went out. Yep, and we're going to go down to the first rock and the next rock and the next okay. one. Okay, and they're all documented it, here. And they're all going to show us where they took off from and where they landed. Okay, cool. Okay, and so then, and let's there, do looks it. Like, looks let's like go. it's engraved on the rocks, as I can see from here, yep. the names who've done it. And so let's go check this out. Here we go. Here we go. Kitty Hawk Regional Airport runs parallel with the Wright Brothers. There we go right there. Yeah, look at he's taking right off into the headwind like the yep. Wright Brothers he's did. Doing Pretty the cool. same flight path as the Wright Brothers. Must be something to this, huh? Okay, so here's where the first flight ended. 120 feet, 12 seconds. And of course, Orville is the one who did the first Orville. flight. Orville. Orville. Hi, Orville. So here's <laughs> where it was. Yeah. Right there. Pretty cool. 120 feet, number one. Let's check it out back to the starting position, which is that uh, big monument, boulder, whatever you want to call it. And there's number one, flight number one. Going to flight number, number two. two. And that was Wilbur's flight, I it believe. It was Wilbur, and yep. And as you can see, 175 feet, 12 seconds. A little over 12 seconds, they yep. said, yep. Yep, number two Lucky by Wilbur. Wilbur. Okay. Yep. So they actually went uh, about another 55 yep. feet Here more. we go for so the third. Number three. By Orville. Yep, and that was 200 feet. feet. Yep. So there they went, uh, you know, almost twice as far as the first flight. Took turns. Yep. And I was going looking back now to starting position, which is that big monument there. That's a uh, pretty good jaunt. There's the first uh, flight. Give you a little uh, graphics on that. There's the second flight. And with that headwind, uh, they're only doing about uh, eight or nine miles an hour. So if they did crash, it wasn't uh, devastating to the aircraft. So that's pin number three. We got a ways to go. Yep. Now mm. on to the fourth. Fourth pin. And we got a walk ahead of us. And yeah. through the magic of editing, we get to pin <laughs> number four. There it is, yep. 852 feet. Almost one minute. 59 seconds to be and exact. by the pilot Wilbur Wilbur so fourth and final flight yep and let's go look back and check that out from the starting mm -hmm. position once again and that's pretty hard to define it's right over that uh, dark dressed guy right there put her in focus and let's shoot a little graphics over here and give people the perspective of what they actually did. would have done a fifth flight uh, but due to high winds uh, actually destroyed the aircraft I'm going to show that uh, coming up in just a bit Good morning. Hello. We have a YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. Okay, so both brothers were intrigued by an early age of the concept of flight. Their interest was attributed to a toy helicopter that their father brought back from them from his travels in France. Like a rubber band one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And their mother, uh, she could probably make anything, be it a toy or a, a sled by hand. And but, neither brother graduated from high school. Wow. So yeah. that, that, despite that, you know, they were very smart. 
from so, Ohio. Yep. Right, right. And they never got married either, did they? No. Wow. No. Look at that. So we got some uh, real shots here of back in the day. There's gliders that they started out with. Right. And these are the gliders that they could house in that first uh, building that we were we saw, which is their living quarters. Yeah. And Wilbur was the one that was convinced that uh, human flight was possible. And we're looking now at the wind tunnel. They're way ahead of their day. Uh, they created the first wind tunnel here. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Because they needed to know more about the flight and lift and all that kind of stuff. And oh, this yeah. wind tunnel was where it's at. But... Uh, Creating this was just beyond their day. I mean, right. the exhibit uh, shows you run your hand along and it kind of shows how you control your flight like yeah, a bird. Yeah, but because of COVID, we couldn't do it. One of the first phases for the Wright brothers was uh, learning how to control the airplane and aircraft. And they did that with kites and gliders. Here you can see them with the gliders. And uh, they learned a lot from this. Uh, and it was a stepping stone towards the, the powered uh, airplane, of course. And the press didn't pay any attention uh, to the Kitty Hawk flights. No. They thought uh, that it was not worth covering. Yeah, you know, the U.S. Uh, didn't believe in them, basically. And here you can see the believers. Uh, mm -hmm. But the French did. The France actually came and uh, got transcripts and all the basic data from them. And they're inquisitive, and they learned quite a bit from it. But the U.S. were kind of, they were kind of shunning them, sorry to say. Okay, for thrust, uh, the, one of the most important, or the most important part, was the engine. And uh, they actually had, uh, back in their bike shop, uh, back in Ohio, their lead bike technician, he helped create the engine with them. And it was built from scratch by these guys, casted and everything. So that's cr quite amazing, I think, uh, that they could do a four-cylinder engine like this and uh, get it on an airplane and turn props through all the chains and pulleys and everything they had on there. I think it's amazing. It was truly amazing, It's yes. crazy amazing. So this is a replica of Flyer 1 and did crash after their fifth flight. Right. Uh, they had to make Flyer 2, but this is a replica. Kind of amazed me there when I see those chains and pulleys and stuff that uh, if they use any lubrication on those chains, oh, that yeah. white sheets, those were probably spattered. Right now we're looking at the gliders uh, that they experimented with before the powered plane. And uh, they took quite a few different uh, revisions before they right. got it right. Yep. It had been frustrating. So on this plane, the elevator, which gave lift to the plane, was actually in the front of the plane. Modern day planes, it's always in the back. So when they wanted lift, of course, they would uh, take that uh, yoke arm that they had there and shift these two um, wings right here up so they'd get lift. So the problem of control, which was three aspects of roll, pitch, and yaw. So roll, of course, is left and right. And when you're in the plane, of course, um, thrust forward and backwards and then of course yaw is kind of like a compass so it's kind of shifting uh, east west north south foot granite monument sits atop Kill Devil Hill. It was dedicated in 1932 and of course it was dedicated to both the Wright brothers and Orville was still living. The inside of the monument was hollow. To see who would fly first the boys flipped a coin and Orville won the toss. This was so epic, let's review this again. Uh, you can see we had a headwind that day of 27 miles an hour. And uh, there's a second flight already. And uh, 30 to 35 miles an hour was the flight speed of the plane. So basically the overall land speed was under 10 miles an hour. But that's what they wanted. Yeah, in case they crashed, they, they wouldn't yeah. wreck the airplane that bad this way. The fifth flight that day uh, ended tragically. A Sad. big gust of wind came up and twisted it up uh, beyond repair. 